Uh, shot in Hawaii, all the jungles in Hawaii, which you loved. Your, were you born in Hawaii? I wasn't born in Hawaii. I was you lived born there. in San Francisco, but I did a lot of my growing up there. Yeah. So, yeah, I so it was, you were it was born amazing. Here. I don't know. I don't think. No. You told me. I, I didn't. Didn't. <laughs> no, I told I you. I swore you said. I've known you for years. I've always said I was. Well, when we were there, you gave me a big speech like, this is my land. I started. <laughs> <laughs> I swore now all of a sudden, San Fran. That was San Fran. Then I transferred. When we were there, you gave me a very like spiritual speech about how it all started. How your mother held you over this cliff. This is the cliff where I was born, and my mother gave me. This is the problem. Yes. Try, yeah, try to be respectful. Hawaii was beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful, uh, you know, mountainside and lushness, and and uh, we shot in this beautiful place called Kualoa Ranch, where uh, uh, Jurassic Park, the original Jurassic Park, okay. was shot, and the ones uh, after that as well, and it was just amazing. But you didn't like it, Kevin. He hated it. No, no, this no, is no, the no. problem. I didn't, I didn't like it at all. I mean, outside of the the spiritual grounds that you took me to, and I swore you yeah. even sung a song. You were like, I specific. We'll talk about it really? later. Well, what, how the song goes. The song. You were like, right. you were like, Kula. <laughs> this is uh, you in Manchester. Uh, now, do you even know the name of that show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's I it was called? the only black guy there that day. Forever. That's Coronation Street. Well done. Yeah. 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 That's, you, that's you in Beverly Calif. But this picture, this looks like you've been photoshopped in. Yeah. <laughs> Roy's rolls no, can't no. be that big. First of all, it looks like I grew up there. <laughs> and, uh, Kevin, you you brought your kids back to Philadelphia. Yes. But not for like Kevin Hart Day. You brought them back to where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And was it just? <laughs> was it to impress them? Why did you bring them back? Well, you know, I'm, uh, parenting is something that I take pride in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to make sure that my kids understand the value of hard work and, and what the meaning behind it should be. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want you thinking that what we have and and our lifestyle is how it's supposed to be because mm. it's not. Yeah. There's a there's a reality behind it. So I'm gonna take mm. you to where dad is from. So mm -hmm. we take a trip, you know, we take a real trip to Philadelphia. Mm. Uh, and you know, we land and I say, I'm gonna show you where I grew up so you can understand. You land in your private where jet. Well, yeah. we did <laughs> <laughs> Listen, every yeah. lesson has a moment of, of, yeah. of disbelief. Just follow yeah. me for a second. I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm right. The lesson didn't start till we got off the plane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, duh. Yeah. It's obvious. We got in the car and started driving through in the neighborhood yeah. where I was from. Then that's where the that's lesson, where the lesson started. Where, where are you from? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we, we pull up to my place and you know, I give this long speech. It's like a moment. Like, it's like 7 a.m. I got there when nobody would be there. And I'm like, look, I didn't have, okay? Yeah. Look, this is this is all we, this is the grass. It's, you see this little thing? It's all the grass we had. I had to sit on the step. I waited for the bus here. I walked two and a half miles to get from here to where I had to go to meet my mom. Yeah. This was not a situation that you were comfortable in. And I get done and my kids are like, we wanna live here! Shit! <laughs> I'm gonna show you what we have is nice. You just gotta work for it. We don't wanna go home! <laughs> so let us go upstairs! I literally had to stop the lesson. I, I, I trip to Philadelphia short. I was like, let's just go back home. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you books from now on. No more live <laughs> Well, your character's name is Dr. Smolder Bravestone. Yes. And uh, so all the characters have strengths. Uh, yes. So one of your strengths is the smolder. An actual smolder, yes. yes. It just takes over, uh, and I have no control of it. And did you know you could smolder? Like, did you kind of think, yeah, <laughs> I, when, you, when you read it, did you got to go, oh, yeah, I'll do my smolder? You know? I now. take you... Is great. that it? No, no, it didn't come yet. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that literally is where it came from. That 
What you're seeing, and this is why he looked at me, because it's so frustrating. Just go ahead. Tell, tell a story about your stupid smoke. No. <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of those things that, you know, as we're developing the script and thinking, well, what could be a fun thing? Well, what if a fun thing, one of the fun things was he, he has this ability to smolder and it just takes over him. He has no control of it. Uh, and, uh, and it's just one of those things, Graham, that the, God delivered, I signed for it. And, then, <laughs> and I just do it. And every, everyone likes it and everyone loves it except <laughs> one individual. <laughs> you know I'm gonna tell you what it is, okay? Now we we are we are very close. We are very close as friends, and you know, in this position, he's a producer on the film. So sometimes I, I just bit my tongue. So this idea came up from a producer like mentality. Well, like, oh, you know what would be great for this character well, I know, I know. If, if he smoldered? And I was like, what? You know, what I mean? and he's like, you know, if he did a thing, and I was like, what? Well, that got to do with that being like in the game. You don't have to he's say like, it like that. A, he's right. like, it's a thing. Right. And he's like, and then he brought him back. He was like, my mom used to do it to me when I was, when I was over the mountains. <laughs> and that's why we listened to him, because he brought him back. Everything got tied back to Hawaii. That's how he did oh. it, Graham. Well, the proof is, can, can we see a smolder? Can we see a smolder? Oh, oh, I'd be happy God. to. Great. Sit back for a second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a little music? Maybe something that's a little ominous? Maybe, okay, Whoa. here we go. Wow. Yes. Okay, okay here we go. You ladies. can do it to me if I you can want. Die. Yes. <laughs> You're ready. Here we go. That's why you are who you are, bro. That's why. That's why. a lot of it. We wanted to expand the Jumanji universe, so we went from the jungle, then we went to the dunes, then we went to the desert, then we went to the snow-capped mountains in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, we were... There's a massive scene where we're on camels. Kevin got to know his camel very, very well. Terrified of camels. Very, very right? racist, yes. camel. He, <laughs> racist. Let's, just, let's just get it out the... Yes. Let's get it out. Because animals are racist. Well, yes. Yeah. The only black guy that was there... <laughs> Camel definitely had it out for me, did he not? Was any other camel making noise except mine? <laughs> Was any other camel making noises? Kevin, well, here's the thing, as you guys know, like animals, they feed off the energy of the human being. Oh. And he had a very fearful energy. Right, so I'm, I'm racist against myself. <laughs> It was it was a, the camel was not it was not a nice camel, Graham. I, I believe you. I believe you. The, the camel I feel sorry is like the camel that you climbed aboard must be like, the camel's supposed to be in a row kind of thing. Not me! Yeah, not I'll take him, I'll take him. Yeah. Yeah. That camel was making happy noises with that you on it. Camel left with three humps. Right. <laughs> Bad day for that camel. What? Yeah, three humps. Because yes. you swelled the middle section up because you're so big. <laughs> you get it. Okay. <laughs> what, did, what, was it, what did you perform at? You performed at a seafood festival? I mean, which, which, which shit show you want to know about? <laughs> it was the one, that time zone. It was only, I think they wanted, was it crab? I had a, I had a crab fest. That <laughs> crab fest? Listen, what is you, that? In the beginning of the stand-up comedy, <laughs> you're, not, you're not performing in, in luxury, you know, venues. They, <laughs> wherever they feel that they can build the stage and make money is where you're going. So there was a crab fest. <laughs> Uh, they was like, we're going to book some talent. Book some comedian talent. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I'm available. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to tell a joke while people cracking crabs. <laughs> it's not the best environment. I mean, literally, the frustration that comes from not being able to open a crab is serious. And if you're not funny at the same time, the stuff that you hear. I remember hearing a woman, oh an older lady, who was like, she was cracking crabs. Because <laughs> this is how you crack crabs. <laughs> 
looking at me and she's like cracking the crab. And I tell a joke and the joke doesn't work. And I remember this lady just going, oh no. <laughs> I would much rather be booed. The, dis <laughs> the disappointment that came from her voice and then, oh no. She said, baby, it was like, oh no, baby. As, as if I made a mistake with my choice of life. Like, like I'm not doing it wrong. I, I mean, you know, look, the, 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 the hardship that I went through has helped. I helped build me into the person I am today to where I, I can take so much. But I, I've been through it all. I was, I was hit in the face with a buffalo wing. Uh, <laughs> I performed at a... Don't perform a, around <laughs> food. No, no, no. When we go to my shows now, there's no food alive. <laughs> uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was actually a male strip club that they oh shut gosh. down for comedy for the first half. So <laughs> it, was like, it was a bunch of... It was ladies in there, and, you know, it was just supposed to be us performing for these women that were riled up. First thing, I got oh, on stage no. when they introduced me, and this lady was like, pull it out! I said, hey, hey! <laughs> Hey, hey, that's not me. I'm not here for that. I'm here to entertain. These are jokes. I, I know who's got kids. I start, I start trying to merge into kid material. And there's one dude from the back. I just remember this dude from the back. He was like, that's enough. And he just, he just threw a buffalo wing at me. And it landed, hit me, hit me in the cheek. A little bit of sauce got like right here. Buffalo sauce is hot, so I start. I assumed that it was a woman with a deep voice, so I was like, who threw it? Who threw it? Because at the end of the day, I'm a man. I'm a man first. Don't disrespect me. <laughs> he stood up. He was like, I did it. And I, I contemplated just taking my clothes off. I was like, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not.